Now, before we get into this video, folks, I have to give a massive shout out. This person does wish to remain anonymous, but you will know who you are if you are watching. So one of my wonderful supporters actually put in a really nice donation towards Project Paradise. In return, I make a stick insect video. Now, I was racking my brains. What kind of stick insect video should I do in return for this generous donation? And I thought, why not show you and finally reveal the rarest species in all of the realm. Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So. As you can see, my table's actually pushed back for this video because I had painters in finally sorting out my ceiling and I just didn't really put anything back. So you can see here a small tank. Now you're probably thinking, what kind of sticking set can I keep in a tank that small? Well, the guys in here are only small juvenile size and they will be getting upgrade later on and I will be filling you in on how that upgrade goes. Now before we have a look at these guys, let me give you an explanation of quite how rare they really are. So back in April this year, I purchased some eggs of Curtis Lakin, a guy that I often go to for uncommon species. These eggs did in fact hatch reasonably quickly and the nymphs have started growing. Now I am over the moon with these because when you take on a species with very little information about them, you always panic. Will I get it right? and it seems that I have been doing just fine. Now, these eggs were special. Let me explain how special. Now this species is the Taraxippus samare, right? If you haven't heard of them, Google them, look at what the adults look like, they're beautiful. Curtis and maybe two or three other people are the only ones at the time of when I purchased those eggs that I ever knew to even own that species within my country, within the United Kingdom, within England, right? Him, I actually only know of two, him and one other. There's bound to be, have been a couple more, but they're the only ones that I actually knew of that had these species in. Now they were discovered, I believe in 2020, and I don't know who took them into culture first, but I'm guessing it's someone over in Europe. And I know that Curtis and potentially the other people paid a lot of money for sexed pairs. A lot of money, right? They raised those sex pairs and these were the first set of eggs from that culture. Meaning that this generation I have right here has come from the first original raised adults in England. How cool is that? Now I know that there is another gentleman called Kane that's now dispersing some of these himself as well as Curtis, meaning there are going to be other people with these now, but I got my hands on one of the first second generations to have ever entered the UK and I am going to share what they look like with you today. So before I get into this, this is food changing day. Now I really need to point this out because it bothers me a little bit. When I've done stick insect videos, a lot of the time I will show you them on the day that they need new food. And the reason being is they are more visible and I have to deal with them anyway to change the food plants. And I've had various people at the time going, oh, you've left dry plants in there, dead plants in there. Um, you need to give them fresh, trying to give me advice. I have done this for years, guys, right? I don't leave them like that. This is at the final day. And as proof, here are the ferns that are gonna be going in there. We've got your typical, and we've got our dragon tongue ferns. And as you can see, I've got my collecting bag of bramble. So there is your proof, ladies and gentlemen, that it is changing day. It also is the day I need to mist them down. So if we have a look in here, now these guys are small, so we're gonna take them out for a better look. So we've got a moss section down here just to hold some humidity into the air, as well as having um, a kitchen roll floor, which I mist down regularly. Now, can you see nymphs? You're probably looking right now and saying, I thought I was gonna expect something a bit more exciting. 
but trust me when I get the macro lens out on these guys for you you are going to love them and remember they are still only small juveniles so what I'm gonna do now guys I'm gonna take this out I'm gonna sort out this enclosure ready to put them back in and we are gonna have a nice close-up look at these beautiful and incredibly rare animals so what I do when I'm taking out old flu plants for small enclosures like this is I lay a little bit of kitchen towel down because it's white, it's clean, and you'll be able to spot if a stick insect falls off and starts running. So we're just gonna simply manoeuvre this out very carefully, like so, and place it down here. So most of these guys are sat on there right now. Now I'm gonna put the camera down for a second, folks, while I change the inside bit of this and then we're going to have a nice look at these so one-handed this might be a little hard be carefully grab the food plant making sure you're not going to pinch any insects while you're doing so and you remove them now with fern eaters it is important to make sure that you remove old ferns sometimes i leave sticks in of food plants but with ferns i always make sure to remove them because they can mold easily look at this guy here We'll have a close look probably at that one specifically. So there we go. So what I'm gonna do is change the water in here, put them some fresh food plants in, and have a look at these guys. So there, there's your top tips anyway for changing small stick insects. Put the plants on here so you can watch if they start scarpering away. Always change your water and for a humid one I always add a bit of moss to keep up humidity levels I also leave a little puddle if you've got a mesh top in any way and it will slowly drip down throughout the day as well so these are a humid kept species wicked let's see what it looks like with a fresh plant set up so there we go nice healthy and green in there dampened bottom and as you can see I've always left space around the mesh and hanging space from the plants for molting. So here are our critters. Where'd that big one go? Oh, just down here. Cool, the moment you've been waiting for there, ladies and gentlemen, finally here. Let's whack the macro lens on, bring the light forward and have a look at the T Samare at their best. There we have it. You see why all the fuss now? Before I was able to get a macro on, you probably thought they looked like little boring brown nymphs, right? Look at that. Is that not amazing? You've got those greens, those browns, and those spikes. It's like a, a mossy appearance, but in an animal. So it's going into the shade a bit, but you can see where the light is reflecting through the leaves. We've got a greener one over there, but this specimen is outstanding. Now they look pretty similar when they grow up, just bigger. Oh, it's so cool, right? So cool. Let's see if we can see another specimen close up. Here's a slightly younger one, imitating the wind because I've just moved that plant. So it felt like the wind was blowing and also maybe a bit from my breath because I'm quite close. You can see it's younger, hasn't got quite as bold colours, but it's still also more green than brown. They will go darker as they grow. You can't see it very well because of the excellent camouflage. But you can still make out the shapes, right? And look at the head. Almost like a little spiky crown beautiful see if we can find another to look at now, I want to try and get a close-up on a head it's not quite working the way I wanted it so I'm gonna go back to that other specimen see if we can get a better look at the head of that one. Oh, it's just that nearly it won't quite focus I've moved the plant a little that's why they're being a bit sketchy and they're holding on to each other there and actually bothering each other a little bit. Can you make out that head? Is it gonna blur? Is it gonna blur? I think this might be the best we're gonna get. Look at it. Look at it. Such a wonderful animal. 
Now I don't think we're going to get much better than this ladies and gentlemen so I'm going to take the macro off now and I, while I'm concentrating on the camera I don't want any of these to have run off the sides. I have kept a very good eye. Now I can't freehand when I put these guys back because with one hand it's going to be difficult. If I drop one it's going to be a nightmare to find them on this floor. So we're going to stick the camera back on the tripod and I'll talk to you as I put them back in their home. Okay, so not going to be looking at you guys so I'm going to be concentrating. Now, behaviour of these, they're not that bad. They are skittish but I've had worse. So some, some stick insects will literally drop to the floor and either play dead and say stay still or have like hissy fits all over the floor. These guys are kind of in between. They're not massive droppers um, but they can throw a little bit of a hissy. Oh, I nearly, nearly put my thumb on that one. But they also walk onto the plants really quick. You get some stick insects that will cling onto your arms or fingers. If they're on your finger, they'll bend around it as if it's a branch. Really difficult to maneuver when they do that. Um, also with fern eaters, you'll find a lot of fern eaters have a similar like mossy type look. Um, because of where they are in the world, it's the best camouflage for them. The problem with that is that you don't always see them on the old food plants. So you need to be so, so careful not to miss a single one because being a humid species like these, they will not just survive walking around your home. Likelihood is if you haven't found them again that day or the next day, they're gonna have dried up and died unless you've got a very humid room. Um, so you really wanna make sure you do not miss a single one of these guys. Now I did have a few casualties at first stage nymphs. You get that a lot with stick insects anyway, that the original um, first stage, like fresh hatchlings, not all of them are gonna make it. Um, but after a first molt, I've had very little in the way of death. So that's a very good sign that the keeping for them is correct. And as I said, oh, they're trying to escape now, as I've said, it's a, a humid environment for these guys. Um, room temperature I've done it at. I've got one crawling up the side of the tank here. And I feed mine exclusively on ferns, but you can do bramble too. Now if you do get hold of these guys, you can experiment a bit with food plants. They've not been in culture long enough for us to know every plant that they eat. So, oh, sorry, concentrating. I have a decent number here. In fact, there's a couple more than I thought I even had. I haven't counted, but I reckon there's probably around 10 or so in here. Um, so I'm well chuffed, which means their hatch rate, although I had mortality in some first stage nymphs, their hatch rate must be pretty good because I bought 30 over. And sometimes you can buy 30 over and only end up with one or two. Um, or sometimes you can start with 30 over, have them all hatch and most of them die before um, they molt. So for me to have at least 10 here, at least, um, is good because I didn't have every single one hatch either. Um, and all of them have surpassed first molt that's in here currently. Now I'm just double checking the fans because I really don't wanna lose any. I keep seeing little stringy bits that I think are legs and they're not. Um, I highly recommend as well when you do this you actually close the tank um, because they can crawl out because my eyes are literally everywhere and I'm so used to this we should be fine um, I think we are all done so would you like to have one last look at them in their home and then we'll wrap this video up so there we have it look how well camouflaged they are on those leaves stunning so a massive, massive thank you to the person who wanted to remain anonymous for your kind donation towards Project Paradise. I hope this was the type of video you were happy with. If not, send me a message. I'll do you another video, my friend, because it's people like you that can keep me going. Now, if anyone's unaware, we are demonetized from YouTube right now because of a video, a joke video that they didn't like. Um, so I'm earning nothing from YouTube. So if you do want to be able to support me, there is a link to my Patreon account in the description below. Um, which can gain you access to my private Facebook group as well for the Disciples of the Realm, which are my financial supporters. If anyone's joined lately and doesn't have that link, um, just search me up on Facebook, type in, you can either find me through the Bug Realms page and message me there, 
or you can find my private page which is Sam Carver and it has the Bug Realms logo on it for you to join up to the group but the the private group is only for Patreon or PayPal supporters so yes if you want to just give a one-off donation whether it's towards Project Paradise our stick insect cultivation project or whether it's towards something else um, you can do so just through PayPal which is in the link below too but of course having your views you sharing my videos you commenting and liking is good enough for me let's educate the world on the wonders of phasmid keeping so thank you all for watching ladies and gentlemen i hope you have enjoyed seeing one of the rarest stick insect species in the hobby at the moment i reckon these guys are going to boom and they're just going to be one of them species that everyone wants to get their hands on so let's close this up and put these guys away thanks for watching everyone take care bye bye <laughs>